Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. Today I thought we'd have a little look at this warrior's beard and hair and see what we can do with it. Let's have a look at some uh, ways of creating the beard and this guy's hair. I'm using the extra small spear shader and I've got my heat set at level 2 which is just heating up at the moment. Now with my reference image I have a line here where there's a main chunk of beard that sits forward from this darker offside part of the beard so I've got my line in there as like a breaker point that all the hair to this side is going to be darker because it's on his offside where the light isn't casting the same when we're doing small pieces like this we don't have to go into the greatest amount of detail with beards etc you know we're not looking to really go in depth here in the middle I mean I've started very early stages of the guy's face here in the middle here is a dark patch you know where the filtrum is on his moustache so we need to mark that in and then really all I would do is using the point of my extra small spear shader is just maybe just put some squiggles we're not looking for high detail on this part of the beard but it is another opportunity to capture a little bit of depth as his beard wraps round his cheek that will be getting created On his near side, we have his sideburn. So again, not going crazy. Obviously, if you were doing a, a bigger portrait, then you would look at the beard in absolutely more detail. Then what we're going to be doing with this guy. So I'd marked out roughly where his beard goes onto his cheek, which is a very faint line. mark down at the bottom where we want it to finish and 
and uh, keep the heat lower on your pen so you have control over the heat and the heat doesn't have control over you which is a huge benefit to us so here below the lip there is a drop off point you know that bit of stubble that I don't know what you call the bit that people sometimes have in the middle there but this guy's got it All I'm doing is like everything else, there's a, that went a bit too much a touch down with too much of the pen there you see. So we may need to turn the heat down just a touch more. Because I want control over this heat. Not for it to get away with, from me and start running away from me and me trying to play catch up with it I just personally find it's always better to be low and slow Pyrography should be called patienceography as well because much like many of the art form things aren't created in a couple of hours depending on the level of detail that you personally want to add to something you know, and the time you're willing to spend. I so said, for me, time is immaterial. So when you create an art, it's, it's, it's just finished when it's finished. This is all that straggly hair. We may find that we might have a better tool for this, but we'll persist with this one for now. I'm just squiggling in some of the layering. I'm not really following any reference picture as such. All these little squiggles that I'm barely adding at the minute are just the base layer. We'll have to keep the video of this one. I'll zoom it in, but I'll have to make it look as if I'm left handed, I think, otherwise. You're not going to be able to see it because my hand's going to be in the way. We're at a point here, we have to start thinking about the lip of the guy because he will he does have a lip and he goes off in like a an arc round but
cast this piece connecting with the rest the hair in a minute will be a bit of a better thing we can look at rather than their beard but I found off my travels so far with hair it's not so much when we're actually doing the hair on the top it's not so much you don't burn the actual individual strands of hair you burn between them underneath them and you're looking for the darker areas add layering effect to the hair and this is such a small scale piece that it's not going to be highly detailed and And it's just really like dog's fur just you know layer it up keep layering until you find the sweet spot in your own eye of what you were trying to achieve that's why having that heat lower allows you to gradually build your way to the sweet spot instead of being there instantly you know you can just gradually make your way to it You'll very seldom see me burning at anything much above level number three, maybe three and a half, depending on what pen I'm using on the Optima. Where we have to think about it is Let's say if you're painting the walls of your house, you want to just slap it everywhere. The paint will you you want to keep it within the boundaries and in control. So it's the same with our pyrography. We always want to be the one in control of the heat. This guy has a missing patch here as part of his face. This is still all just under the tones. not over committing herself to anything because if we don't like the look that we're we're getting we haven't gone too dark to be able to do something about it I 
this is where the, the light catches the middle of his beard. Take it around just squiggly. Still a lot of graphite up here on the face, which will be getting removed as we go. But I'd start making some sort of look at the nose and eyes and everything in the day, but I'm definitely not happy yet with that. So there's a lot more work to be done to try and gives some sort of detail to this face. So I'm by to add like depth to fur or hair or whatever be looking at the areas behind the strands of hair that you can darken up to give the effect that there's something lying on top of something else that's on top of something else and he's moving around you know So for the likes of a beard, of course, there is hair everywhere. If you were to do a larger portrait of someone with a beard, then look for the areas behind the strands of hair. And capture them and it will add so much more depth. to your piece. Once did a wood burning of Hagrid, you know, of Harry Potter. And he had a, Hagrid has a big massive beard, don't he? That's really straggly. And I found that the one I did on that, I had a bit of success with the way I burnt it. I think I gave it to my sister-in-law in the end because she's a massive Harry Potter fan. remember as well beards and if we're talking about a subject like this you're not going to have a neatly trimmed beard is it you know if it's some warrior that's just come off from a battle or whatever he's not going to have neatly cut the hair is just going to be everywhere
there are little areas where we have to pay a bit more attention which is when we're going to add his lip later and so I'll just be done on time lapse because I'm just trying to get a feel for this face and see if I can do some might even have to get the sandpaper out to be honest because the pen I used to start the eyes it got away from me and I've been trying to play catch up with it since that first line there It went in way too strongly. And this guy's beard actually goes down that far short of this uh, middle of his pecs make it as long as you want you could make it massive you know you, the world is your oyster <laughs> Unless you're doing an actual commission piece for somebody, it is totally down to you how you want to create a piece of art. I said reference pictures are great for reference. unless someone's paying you to do something you don't have to stick rigidly to the reference Would ideally let's let's get this pencil let's just try and mark in just roughly where this bottom lip would sit just to give us some sort of guide to know where we're working to that's just a a slug <laughs> but it's a break point that we can work towards This is all still just undercoating, depending on how dark you want your beard to go. I will be darkening it up somewhat when I zoom in and change pens and Try and add a little detail. And I 
that was his lip coming and it just comes just past this nostril if we look at it properly the far line is somewhere near there and as you can see with the size of this extra small space shader compared to the piece I'm working on you can see how small an area we're actually trying to work in it's extremely tight And we'll be able to add depth in by like I said putting darker patches behind hairs to give the beard some volume. You don't want it to appear flat. This is a good example really of like what you do with layering up of long fur. You may think you can only put one layer down on the wood but you can actually build many layers on top of each other. Cause make your squiggles or your little lines going in the direction of the way you want it to look. You know, it, you certainly won't be burning just flat, otherwise, you'd look like a guy with a completely flat beard. always burn in the directions just looking to make the thing look like it's shaped as And there is the under coat then of oh. 
Miss Viking with beard. And that, that that's very much just a base coat. So I will get another pen out to really zoom in and add detail to that. And then we'll have a little look at this guy's hair. Way around the sides, it's moving off in that direction, isn't it? And then here. Right in there we have part of his double crown. No in Yorkshire we used to call them cow's licks. I don't know why I, where that come from, but it's just a memory of because I've got one on one side and I used to call it coarse lip or something, but it was they were in Yorkshire we called them cow's lips. So you see when I transferred out my outlines I just put a basic shape of where the hair sits This line is where his hair makes the head. So it's flick. A few little dashes in the direction. Behind the behind the ear, so that we know the direction the hair is going to go. This is still too high. This pen. I'll wait for it to cool down a second. I'm not going to be able to have the control that I want on that heat setting. Not when I'm doing something so small. I really want the heat to barely be leaving a mark at this stage. So if 
if you feel your heat is getting away from you, turn it down. Just you can even lower it to help it cool down. Sometimes as well, another trick for you is you know when you've got your leather strap for cleaning any carbon or whatever off, if you dab your pen onto your strap, it will take all the heat out of it. Some people use uh, like a spare piece of wood next to the side of them to touch down with first. You know, to see what heat they're getting. And that's another option of a spare piece of board next to you. That you can use to test how hot your pen is. At some point we'll look at doing uh, a larger portrait of somebody's hair and we'll have a look together in detail what different effects we can achieve. I know it's a subject area that I'm still learning very much I would not say I'm an expert on hair by any means I've just learned a few basics mainly off my wife who gave me the idea is not so much looking at the individual strands of hair but looking what's between them was the tip she gave me and it helped So like here, for example, where I've got this dark line, that's a point where we can add depth. Because we can give the effect of this hair lying on top of this side bit by adding just this darker undertone and I'll give you a scale of the, like what I'm working on like when my thumb is a small piece Got the heat under control now. One is so it's just barely marking. As a search for the look I want to achieve. Here, there 
there's another marker, isn't there, where his main body of hair sweeps back. So again, this isn't so much about burning in a piece of hair, it's what's between the hair. Been running 42 minutes. I'll give it another 15 minutes. Sorry, we don't seem to get a great deal done in the tutorials. It's the way I work. It doesn't seem like we broach on actually seeing much of piece come to life do we in an hour an hour is nothing in the terms of pyrography you know and then get, an hour is you're barely getting started <laughs> Well, that's where that good thing time lapse comes in, isn't it? Where I can put you on a faster. Look at things and that was suppose of less importance. I have to move my board. I can remember don't work at things, cack and others I say. If something is moving in a certain direction and you need to move the board to keep moving in that direction then move it. Don't try and keep your work flat straight in front of you move your board around Later on, as all this darkens up, hopefully, we'll see some effect of depth. Now this particular hair is going round the back of the head, but lying over the top of it is a lighter patch of hair What I'll do is, because we're not going to get a great deal done now, I know I've been talking for nearly an hour to you about this hair and beard, but we're not going to get a massive amount done in just an hour. So I'm going to put it on time lapse now on to the end of this video of me completing this hair and beard. 
and hopefully I'll turn I'll mess about with the video at the end of it and slow it down so you'll be able to see the process hopefully of us getting some better depth and shape and volume to this hair okay so thanks for watching everybody feel free to leave me any comments of anything you'd like us to have a look at with wood burning like I said I do burn seven days a week so we can have many projects on the go if there's a particular subject type that you'd like us to have a look at together feel free to leave me a comment okay thank you very much for your time today anybody who's watched this to the end I do truly value and appreciate you sharing your time with me and I hope the time lapse at the end of this will pay off a little for you for your time for watching today okay so take care of everybody have a lovely Sunday and it is Sunday today as I'm burning this a lovely rest day maybe pick up your pyro pens and have a go at your own projects on your rest day okay take care everybody stay safe thanks for watching bye for now